the most awkward Oscar speeches that made audiences squirm. The latest Oscar nominees have been announced, and we're counting down the days until the most important event in the Hollywood calendar. Celebs will be busy practicing their politely disappointed losing faces while simultaneously working on their acceptance speeches. Over the years, we've been blessed with some incredible moments that are awe-inspiringly cringeworthy. It would only be right to look back at them now, wouldn't it? Join us as we take a look at the most awkward Oscar speeches that made audiences squirm. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos about your favorite movies and TV shows. Jack Palance. And the Oscar for Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role goes to... Jack Palance. In his heyday, actor Jack Palance was a pretty big deal. He was nominated for Best Actor in a Supporting Role three times in the 50s, but didn't end up winning until 40 years later in 1992. By that point in his career, the 72-year-old probably had a good idea of what he'd say if he ever scooped up a gong. But it wasn't what audiences expected. He strolled up onto the stage to accept the awards presented to him by Whoopi Goldberg, and it all sort of went downhill from there. He started in with a jibe about host Billy Crystal before walking away from the microphone to showcase his push-up skills. Billy Crystal. God. I crap bigger than him. <laughs> Thankfully, he got back up, but it could have been touch and go for a moment there. There were no thank yous, no tender declarations of love, just a lot of awkward jokes that lasted over two minutes. For a guy that had been waiting decades to win, he really didn't have a lot to say for himself. Michael Moore Back in 2002, Michael Moore was one of the hottest filmmakers out there. While he's still around, he seems a little quieter these days than he was back then. He scooped up the prize for Best Documentary Feature for Bowling for Columbine. By that point, he was well known for his political activism, but no one could have predicted what would happen during his acceptance speech. He invited all his fellow nominees onto the stage with him, and like the good Hollywood celebs they are, they all trooped up on stage, most likely thinking that Moore was going to say that they were all winners in his eyes. While Moore did thank the Academy for the win, he wasted no time in launching into a political tirade about the then-president George Bush and the Iraq War. Shame on you, Mr. Bush! Shame on you! He lambasted the press to a chorus of mixed cheers and boos for 30 seconds before the music cut him off. The camera panned to the audience with the likes of Adrian Brody looks confused, and Nicole Kidman sat with her arms crossed. It was a real mixed bag, and while some may have appreciated what he was trying to say, many thought it was the wrong place and the wrong time for politics. Marlon Brando The winner is... Marlon Brando. Arguably one of the best actors of his time, it might be surprising to know that Brando didn't really buy into the awards game. As the 45th Academy Awards, the superstar won Best Actor for his role as Vito Corleone in The Godfather. Awkwardly, he didn't attend and instead sent someone to collect his award, Sasheen Littlefeather, a Native American civil rights activist. She came armed with instructions to deny the award and a 15 page rants from Brando to highlight the movie industry's poor treatment of her people. As Roger Moore tried to give Little Feather the award, she politely declined and started to explain Brando's decision in the limited time she had available. Cannot accept this very generous award. And the reasons for this being are the treatment of American Indians today. While it was certainly a little bit of a shock, the most cringeworthy part was that some of the members of the audiences were actively booing the poor woman, despite her noble cause. Little Feather read Brando's full speech out to the press behind the scenes, and he didn't mince his words. It read, When they laid down their arms, we murdered them. We lied to them. We cheated them out of their lands. We starved them into signing fraudulent agreements. Angelina Jolie 
This one is up there with one of the most awkward speeches of all time, Oscars or not. Jolie won the award for her role in Girl Interrupted, where she played drug-addicted Lisa. She undoubtedly deserved the win, but she was remembered that night for all the wrong reasons. Angie brought her brother James as her date, which would have been fine except they seemed to be oddly physically close, holding hands on the red carpet and generally holding each other in the ways that siblings don't but couples do. One of the first things she set up on the stage was, I'm so in love with my brother right now, I love him so much, before going on to gush about him even further. And I'm so in love with my brother right now. <laughs> he just held me and said he loved me, and I know he's so happy for me. <laughs> okay, so they're just close, right? Well, things got a little more uncomfortable later in the evening when Angie was spotted locking lips with her bro for a little longer than socially acceptable. It wouldn't be the only time that James accompanied his sis to an award show either, nor the only time that they were spotted kissing in a way many deemed inappropriate and incestuous. La La Land Lest we forget one of the best moments of all time that left audiences across the globe speechless. In 2017, La La Land's won a total of six Oscars, stealing the show. Unfortunately for Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, when they were called up to the stage to accept Best Picture, it soon went south. The writers and directors were midway through their speech when it soon became clear that something was incredibly wrong. The cast and crew were whispering and then all of a sudden moonlight was revealed as the true winner moonlight you guys won best picture moonlight won. Come on, I, this is not a joke Come this on. is not a joke i'm afraid they read the wrong thing Somehow, there was a mix-up with the cards, a first in Oscar history. The best part about the entire thing was Gosling's face as he stood there in front of a room full of his peers, looking like the most embarrassed man in the universe. We couldn't create this video and not include this gem, could we? James Cameron The Oscar goes to James Cameron for Titanic. James Cameron certainly hit the jackpot when he capitalized on the tragic story of the sunken ocean liner. The movie Titanic kick-started the career of Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet as the Academy bestows the Best Director awards to Cameron. Unfortunately for Cameron, he got a little too excited and ended up giving us one of the most embarrassing speeches of all time. It was all well and good until the end of his speech when he thanked his parents, threw his arms up and cried, I'm the king of the world, before howling, yes, howling, and fist pumping the air with his Oscar. Except to say, I'm the king of the world! <laughs> Years later, old James himself would admit that it was one of the biggest regrets of his career that made him look like a damned fool. This moment has haunted him ever since that fateful night, and we can totally understand why. We'd love to say that it's no big deal, James, but it really is. Thanks for the comedy gold. Sam Smith British crooner Sam Smith thought he had no chance of winning the award for best song, but he was wrong. He took to the stage to accept the gong alongside the writer, and things went from bad to worse. The speech was fine, the only problem was what he said was wrong. Smith implied that he was the first openly gay man to accept an Oscar and dedicated the award to the LGBT community. Unfortunately, the comments he referenced were made by Sir Ian McKellen about the Best Actor Award specifically. It didn't take long after the singer got off the stage for others to point out his mistake, and Smith was suitably embarrassed and apologized. Later, during an appearance on The Ellen Show, he explains that he was unhappy with the performance he did in the evening and had been drowning his sorrows in tequila. By the time he got up on stage, he was a little too muddled to get his facts straight. Oops. Gwyneth Paltrow um, I would like to thank the Academy from the bottom of my heart. Um. Over the past few years, Gwynny has become better known for her strange lifestyle website Goop than her acting ability. But back in the 90s, she was still Hollywood's hot property. 
She won Best Actress for her turn in 1999's Shakespeare in Love, giving us one of the most infamous speeches in history. The moment has since been called the day Oscar sincerity died. Maybe she had a little too much champagne, or maybe she was really that moved, but Paltrow proceeded to blub her way through a lengthy, muddled speech thanking virtually everyone she knows in the business or otherwise, sometimes twice. The blonde's beauty couldn't contain herself as she cried endlessly, even thanking now-disgraced Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. It wouldn't have been so bad if it didn't go on for so long, causing members of the audience to look embarrassed by the whole situation. The only clap she got was when she finally shuffled her pink chiffon off stage. Eleanor Burkett before Kanye West, there was journalist Eleanor Burkett. Ye probably took his speech interrupting skills from Burkett, who stormed the stage when Roger Ross Williams won the award for Best Documentary Short Subject in 2010. Burkett shoved her way onto the stage, took over the mic, and cut Williams' speech short by insulting him. Then, she made the acceptance speech herself, even though she didn't win the award. Everyone was confused, but it soon emerged that the pair had beef over the movie in question. According to The Telegraph, the journalist came up with the idea and produced the movie, but later left the project. Although she had effectively brought it to fruition, she was never properly credited for her work. She would later say, He's not speaking to me, so we weren't even able to discuss ahead of time who would be the one allowed to speak if we won. The movie was my idea. I live in Zimbabwe. Roger hadn't even heard of Zimbabwe before I told him about this. I felt my role in this had been denigrated again and again, and it wasn't going to happen this time. Williams, on the other hand, firmly believes that Burnett was out of line. Either way, thank God we got to witness that horror show. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more amazing content, and don't forget to check out one of the other two videos on your screen.